I got to um, end this meeting really quickly, so I'm not going to hold it up um, for people because I have to take care of something for my father. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start the finance subcommittee meeting, and I'd like to welcome Councilor Walsh and thank her for joining. And I see Councilor Click Bruce um, is also joining, and I don't think I know or I can't really see. Outside of Pat Burns, I can't see who's in the Tatenda. Yes, Councilor. Uh, uh, Tatenda Chittamareri is our new labor relations associate. He's been with us for about six months now. Yeah, I think I remember him from before. Okay. And you are, uh, oh, is that Bill? It is. Yeah, I really can't see Bill. Sorry. <laughs> uh, how you doing? Doing um, well. And Benton just joined us. So I'm going to jump right into the agenda. Um, wait, do we have anybody from finance here outside of that? All right, then we'll start with the expenditure reports. First, the June revenue um, versus expenditure report. And then August. What happened in July? We did July already? Yes, we did July last month. Okay. Sorry about that. I, I hadn't had June completed till. Uh, oh, okay. No problem. So we'll start with June, go to August, and then we'll go from there. Thank you. Okay, tonight we have the June revenue expenditure report, which is an unaudited statement. Our audit is currently underway by Powers and Sullivan. Um, you can see that we ended the year with a large surplus of $69 million. The driving force behind this was the Eversource payment of $42 million. Um, we would like the opportunity to send this report to committee and then come back to the finance committee with a buildup of what is making up the $69 million. I've discussed that. Uh, I've prepared a draft for Lindsay and TJ to review, and I think it'll be helpful to give all the council a buildup of really what makes up the $27 million above and beyond the uh, Eversource settlement. Sure. That makes sense to me. So we'll have another meeting just about that on um, for the final. Perfect. Okay. Um, August versus, I mean, August revenue versus expenditure report. Really, the only thing I wanted to point out in the August report is that we have a partial encumbrance for the net school spending carryover amount, which is the amount that by law we have to give back to the school that was not spent in the prior fiscal year. Right now we're carrying $2 million, but we did agree upon a figure that will be reflected in the September report, and that is $20.3 million. That amount is automatically put into the school budget and can be used on anything that is net school spending eligible. Okay. All right. Um, any questions from counselors? Yeah. Uh, sure. I, I, I Looking for the, the link to raise my hand, but okay. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I had a meeting. Uh, so, Pat, to a further explanation, that was that money, the net school spending, is that in the city council budget, the money we have to give back? It's carried over from last year. So at the end of the year, what I do is I, I put the, that funding aside, and it's really, it would reduce our surplus from the prior year. So if we didn't have the net school spending eligibility requirement, our surplus would be $20 million higher, which really is money that belongs to the school department. And this goes back to the Ed Reform Act in, I believe it was 1992. And we've been doing this every year, um, as long as I've been here, which is a long time. That seems like a lot of money to give back. Is 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 it or is it? Kind of it's last year the carryover amount was uh fifteen point eight million. So oh. usually in that neighborhood, it's a bit higher this year than than I've seen it in three or four years, but it's usually between twelve and eighteen million dollars. And do they have a specific use for it or does that change every year? They go back to the school committee and repurpose uh yeah. for where they need it within their budget. Like I wish we had a fund like that that would go yeah. back to the city council. <laughs> Can you arrange that, Pat? <laughs> I've tried years ago, but it didn't work. Thank you. All right. I would like to recognize Councillor Allen's um, hand. Thank you, Councillor. Oh, there it is. There he is. 
Thank you, Councillor Allen, for joining us. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know what you were doing there. I didn't realize you were driving. Oh. Um, but we'll move on to the next two items, which are the collective Council bargaining. Fent also joined us. Oh. You had a question, Councillor Fenn? No, I didn't. And Councillor oh. Councillor Whitfield acknowledged me earlier. So. Oh, okay. I didn't oh, I did. Yeah. I okay. Did. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um. I'm not myself right now. Um, collecting bargaining agreement ratification for the National Association of Government Employees. And then we're going to move right into the Springfield Public um, Health Nurses Collecting Bargaining Agreement ratification. Good, good evening, Councilors. Bill Mahoney, uh, HR and Labor Relations with me tonight. I just attended Chitta Moreri. He is the Labor Relations Associate. He's been with us for about six months now. If you haven't met him um, earlier than this meeting. For the, uh, I'm pleased to report that for the uh, National Association of Government Employees, we have reached a uh, tentative agreement on two contracts and they have both been ratified by the union. Uh, this group has, uh, is comprised of approximately 12 employees. They include the building inspectors, the plumbing inspectors, the wiring inspectors, and the senior inspectors. Um, negotiations began on June 15th, 2021. We had approximately six bargaining sessions. That, those were followed by about four mediation sessions. Our first contract will cover the period of 7-1-21 to 6-30-22. Our second contract will cover the period of 7-1-22 to 6-30-25. The COLAs in these contracts follow the pattern that we did with our other unions, and those are two, 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 and two. Um, there's a one-time $500 signing bonus for four employees who don't benefit from a change that we did in the uh, pay scale. What we did is we accelerated the steps in the pay scale in order to retain and attract talented building and plumbing and wiring inspectors. Um, we added Juneteenth to the list of holidays, and we added a military leave uh, ordinance that the city council had passed uh, a little while back. That's now part of the contract. Any questions from counselors? No, sounds All good. Right. Yep, sounds good to me too. Next one. Sure, thank you. Uh, we have, this is for the, uh, the Springfield Public Health Nurses Association. There are two employees in the bargaining unit. We had approximately six bargaining sessions. Negotiations began on December 17th, 2021. The wages, again, following that pattern are two, 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 and two. The first contract is 7120 to June 30th of 2021. The second contract is July 1st, 2021 to June 30th of 2024. We added a, we, there was a provision in the contract for a $30 per week payment to any nurse that held, that held a BA in nursing. Uh, we increased that to $60 a week, uh, again, for attracting and retaining talented uh, uh, registered nurses. We added Juneteenth to the uh, to the list of holidays, and we changed the vacation accruals in this contract uh, to reflect a accrual by monthly uh, benefit, which is a I think a a better way than we have a kind of an arc, we had a very archaic system for this group, and now every month you just accrue on a monthly basis. And do you know how much accrues each month? Uh, it would depend on their years of service. So in the first five years, it's two weeks. After five years, they would go to three weeks. After 10 years of service, they'd go to four. And after 20, they would go to five. And Councilor, I'm doing that one from memory. So um, if you give me a little latitude, or I missed a couple of years, let me know. But uh, I, I, I <laughs> that sound, it sounds it sounds right from when, you know my understanding. It sounds pretty right. So any questions? Oh, Councilor Fenton? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I would just like to acknowledge that both of these unions are uh, the building department and the nurses are subject to the residency ordinance and um, over Bill's good work over many years, they have different start dates for uh, that being a part of their collective bargaining agreement, but uh, these, uh, these renewals uh, and do not affect their ongoing responsibility to comply with the residency ordinance. That's correct. Good to know. Any other questions from counselors? Seeing none. Thank you, Bill and Tatanda. Tatanda. You got it. <laughs> all right. All 
All right. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. Um, now we're gonna move to the municipal road safety grant, sixty-four thousand nine fifty. No match. Thank you, Councillor. Um, someone, I do believe someone from the police department is supposed to be coming to the seven o'clock. Um, I thought they were supposed to be here. I'm trying to figure out if they have a link. They may not have the link to the meeting today. Um, but regardless, I can give you an overview of this grant. It's for sixty-four thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars. Um, awarded by the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security for the Police Department. It's the Municipal Road Safety Grant. Um, it's a competitive grant, um, part of $5 million overall funding that allows for the adaptation and enhancement of traffic safety programs. Um, there's five, five different types of traffic enforcement mobilizations with this grant funding that's going to be used um, Winter impaired driving, distracted driving, cricketer ticket, speed enforcement, and summer impaired driving. Oh, it's like education type grant. Um, I believe it it funds mobilizations. So for them to um, put officers out to implement these programs on the roads. Oh, okay. Let's see what you're saying. All right. Any questions from counselors? All right. Seeing now we have bills of a prior year from TJ O'Connor for 593.45. Yes. So this is a bill of prior year from TJO. Um, it's actually multiple invoices, six invoices totaling just under $600. Um, it's for Wedgwood Pharmacy. So supplies and services rendered from them um, in FY22. Okay. And then Department of Elder Affairs donation um, of gift cards of $225, kind of self-explanatory, but if you want to yep. speak to it, Lindsay, you can. <laughs> sure. Um, these were donated from Maureen um, Heasley, um, and it is three gift cards from Big Y for $25 each, three gift cards from Stop and Shop for $25 each, and three gift cards from Ocean State Job Lot for $25 each. Oh, thank you, Ms. Hensley. We definitely appreciate your donation. If you can hear us speaking, that was very, very nice of you. Um, they do a lot of programs. Um, at Elder Affairs, so I'm pretty sure they can use those gift cards um, either to give out or to buy something for some type of event um, that they have or program. So thank you, Ms. Easley. Um, Councilor Walsh. Yeah, I was just hand working. Yeah, I do. I got the right button this time. <laughs> um, how does that work, Lindsay? Who, who actually gets the gift cards? Do they go to individuals or? or well, that it's going to be just, they occult. say it's, it says it's nine gift cards to be distributed to seniors in need at the Hungry Hill Senior Center. So yes, I believe these gift cards will go directly to the seniors from Hungry Hill. Oh, so they will. They have a, a way to determine who needs it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. Oh, that's awesome. That's very nice. Okay. Um, any other questions from counselors? Seeing none. Uh, this finance meeting is adjourned.